Today is Wednesday, March 6th, and I'm just wondering about holes, 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 all those holes the Dallas Cowboys have to fill. And now a word from our title sponsor. Are all financial advisors fiduciaries? Fewer than you think, not knowing could reduce your lifestyle. Hi, I'm Mitch Kramer, founder and CEO of Fluent Financial. A fiduciary is a regulatory term to reduce conflicts of interest in wealth management. A fiduciary always works in your best interest. A non-fiduciary advisor might put their compensation or company ahead of yours. At Blunt Financial, we are certified financial planners acting as fiduciary advisors. To learn more, go to FluentFinancial.com or Fluent Financial's YouTube channel. Star Power Expo is the best time to update your home. Get spectacular prices on the best in home entertainment, luxury appliances, smart home products, leather seating, and more. Check out innovations like the 171-inch video wall from LG. The Star Power Expo three-day savings event runs from Friday, March 8th through Sunday the 10th at both Star Power locations, North Dallas and South Lake. Check out all the deals by going to the website, starpowerexpo.com. For a team coming off three straight 12-win seasons, these Cowboys face an offseason with a lot of holes to fill in their starting lineup. Now, that's, that's not terribly unusual in the NFL. Things happen, free agency happens, injuries happen, age happens. But in the Cowboys' case, they may not have the necessary assets to fix all the empty spaces on their team. Let's go to the holes themselves. Let's start with left tackle. Apparently, Tyron Smith and the Cowboys are so far apart salary-wise that Tyron's going to move on in free agency. Now, they could shift Tyler Smith from left guard to left tackle, they originally drafted him to be Tyron's successor, but then that would leave a big hole at left guard. The next hole, center. Tyler Biotish has been a good, solid, serviceable center. But just like Connor Williams and Connor McGrever before him over the last couple of years, Biotish may get a nice payday to leave. Now the Cowboys there do have an undrafted free agent named T.J. Bass, who looked pretty good last year. So you might be able to plug him in at center. Let's go to wide receiver. Yes, there's a hole, a wide receiver. Because, see, the Cowboys may be about to cut Michael Gallup. They'd have C.D. Lamb, who's a superstar, and Brandon Cooks. And then who would be... Number three, Jalen Tolbert, Jalen Brooks, Kevante Turpin. Now nah, he's pretty much of a gadget player. So the Cowboys there would lack some real quality depth. At running back, the sentiment now seems to be that the Cowboys will re-sign Tony Pollard, who went to the franchise tag last year for more than $10 million, that they sign him for a lot less and go forward with Pollard at their number one running back position. I have a question about that. I'll bet you have a question about that. Did Tony Pollard look like a number one running back last year? The Cowboys did not have a power runner last year. And by the way, Pollard's backup Donald could also leave to free agency. So, do you keep him? Do you take your chances in the draft? Do you take your chances down the road in the draft? Let's go to defense. Trayvon Diggs comes back at cornerback, and he's a really good player. But Stephon Gilmore and Jordan Lewis are each free agents. And if they leave, the Cowboys would have no depth at cornerback. None at all. And by the way, the safety J. Ron Curse is a starter. He is also free. 
Let's assume at linebacker that Leighton Vander Esch, sadly, is gone because of his neck injury. Mike Zimmer, the new defensive coordinator, he likes to play a 4-3. And he likes, I hate to use a term that sounds bad, he likes standard linebackers. The Cowboys need some size at linebacker. They need people who can stuff the run. Now, last year's third-round draft choice, DeMarvion Overshone, who got hurt, is going to be healthy this year, apparently. But will he be ready as a rookie to fill one of those holes? The Cowboys, I think there, need at least one more player. Now, last but not least on this list of holes is defensive line and in particular, defensive tackle. The Cowboys have to do something about about the running game defense. It wasn't very good. A, lot, a little over 112 yards a game last year. The big problem there was that last year's number one draft choice, Mozzie Smith, was an enormous disappointment. And, and now, to complicate matters, Dorrance Armstrong, Jonathan Hankins, and Dante Fowler are all free agents in the defensive line. Now, realize what we got here in a lot of these positions is a failure of the draft to provide answers. The Cowboys may lack serious depth at cornerback. Well, they drafted Joseph and Wright three years ago in the second and third round. They can't play. Let's go to defensive line. Mozzie Smith, you know about. Couldn't play. Let's go to linebacker, where the Cowboys have tried a couple of draft choices there. They've drafted a lot of offensive linemen in the fourth and fifth rounds, and they didn't work out. Tolbert was a third-round draft choice. Is he fully ready to step into the number three receiver role? There are a lot of situations here where the Cowboys' lack of depth and holes now are created by the fact that they didn't draft well. I know the narrative is the Cowboys draft well, but let's go back to that defensive tackle hole. The Cowboys have used in the last four years that number one on Mozzie Smith, a number two on Tristan Hill, a number three on Neville Gallimore, and they're hunting a defensive tackle. That shouldn't be. Okay. Let's go to how you fix the holes. First, let's go to money, 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 money. And the Cowboys don't have much. Even though Cap jumped about $30 million this season, he had jumped for everybody. Every team in the league got 30 extra million under the cap. The Cowboys still aren't going to have that much. Thus, they aren't going to be able to spend that much. Dak Prescott's going to get a giant extension. Lamb is getting a lot of money. Right around the corner, Parsons is about to get a lot of money. And Demarcus Lawrence and Zach Martin are already getting a lot of money. So, Dallas doesn't have money to throw around in free agency. Okay, let's go to the other way you fix holes on a team. The draft. Dallas this year will get a fifth-round choice and a sixth-round choice in compensation for losing free agents. That's nice, but realize Dallas will have only three of the top 175 picks in this draft. They'll have a late first, second, and third round pick, no fourth, and then that fifth right at the end of the fifth round. So what would you do? History tells you that you've got to hit your first, second, and third round draft choices. But to count on being able to hit fifth or sixth or seventh round, that's a little bit dicey. So there's still all those holes out there. So what do you do about them? Let's start with your own team. 
And again, go back to those empty spaces. Free agents to be. I'll name just nine of them. There are several more. But I'll name just nine of them. On the offense, Tyron Smith, Tyler Biadish, Tony Pollard, Michael Gallup. On the defense, Stefan Gilmore, Jordan Lewis, J. Ron Kurse, Dorrance Armstrong, and Jonathan Hankins. Those nine players started 129 games in total last year for the Cowboys. That's a lot of gaps. So here would be my strategy. First, in the late first round, I'd draft an offensive tackle. This is a really tackle-rich draft. So the Cowboys could get a talent late in the first round. Now, it doesn't matter if that person plays left tackle or if that person could slide in to play left guard and Tyler Smith would slide outside. That's a hole that has to be filled. Next, at center, I, I would put the undrafted free agent pass in there. Next, wide receiver and running back, or maybe more properly, running back and wide receiver. I think the second and third rounds could fill at least one of those holes. At least one of them. And maybe that hole is filled by a runner. Yes, you'd be counting on a rookie runner, but maybe that's the way you go. Next, I would sign one key free agent. One. It would be a defensive tackle from Indianapolis a 30-year-old named Grover Stewart. Grover Stewart, bad man. <laughs> Grover Stewart is good against the run. He's a giant. He's about 6'4", about 315 pounds, and he stuffs it. That is what the Cowboys need. Grover Stewart is a fine player. Apparently, Indy won't get a contract done with him before free agency hits. And finally, of all the cowboy free agents, the one I would try to keep would be Dorrance Armstrong. He looks like he's coming into his own. And when paired with Lawrence and Parsons, the two stars in the defense, Armstrong became a significant pass rusher. He's still young, and he's good. So... That's one man's opinion, mine. And Jerry says this year he's all in. The one difficulty is Jerry may not have the necessary assets to get all in. Today's episode brought to you by Fluent Financial, Retire Sooner, Better Lifestyle, and by Star Power. Love where you live. Just Wondering is a production of DSP Media for FanStream Sports. You can find Norm's show along with other great programming at FanStreamSports.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, hit follow. And every weekday, a fresh new episode of Just Wondering will be delivered right to you. And if you enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend. Finally, should you have questions or comments, please share them with us by going to X and our address at Norm's Clubhouse. That's Just Wondering with Norm Hitzkus. And every day, I'll be just wondering about something.